I think I'm gonna go find my dad. Grand knew where he was all along. She just never let on. Where you going then? India? No. Blackpool? So we're here at the premiere of Eden by Lions, and I'm now joined by Johnny Vegas. Now, you play quite an interesting character. I also hear that you picked the wig out yourself. Is that true? No, it's not true at all. Who would pick out a wig like that? Um, I, I came in playing a guy, and after page two, I climbed into bed with one of the main protagonists, and you're going, why would he do that? And they're going, he just does. There's nothing weird about it. When you, you, you've seen it tonight on screen, it does seem very weird, doesn't it? B borderline, but, but, but still okay. So how do you normalise a man whose intentions are good, and yet he just climbs into bed with random people? And runs a guest house. <laughs> and he's like Norman Bates' third cousin. But he's do he does mean well. He's got a heart of gold. He's took his niece in to use her as a lure. You know what I mean? As trout do, they come. They stay. He lays with them. <laughs> um, I don't know how, how, how Jason, when they were writing it, came with this character that... He's a bizarre guy. And every interview I've done, they're going, um, so, he's interesting. And basically, everybody is hiding away from going, pervert. He's kind of like a lovable pervert, in a way. Because you know that he's kind of got... I don't know if that's a sentence that many people say every day, but it's kind of... You can tell he's got a kind heart. Um, just... Well, I don't, he's not a pervert. He's a very damaged man because he's never got over. He's a Miss Havisham. The B&B's never moved on. His wife ran away with somebody, and the minute he's got, I don't think, there was never, you know in the film where he goes, oh, we're full, we've got a stag do from, there's no stag do. I really, I didn't, I didn't clock onto that. No, that's what I think, uh. is nobody's staying there. So the minute he's got guests, he just lets his on to him. I mean, he's basically looking after him so he can tell him. His own tragic story. You know that person going, I'll help you out, I'll give you a lift. You get in the car, and then they start talking about themselves, and you go, we should never. <laughs> we should have used a registered taxi. <laughs> He's that uh -oh. kind of guy. But but not in any kind of, nobody's in danger around him. Even when he's doing well. You know, by going, I've got a bin bag of clothes, put these on. They're quite interesting Retro clothes, really. Looks like they've been in that bag for a good 30 odd years or so. <laughs> I think Jason chose them. Uh, the yellow on screen works really. Oh, there's me trying to be a director going. There's just certain bits that stand out in terms of what they choose to wear. It draws it right back to. I love the. You know the scene when Jack's actually in bed and they're both lying together and you're going, Jack, I can't tell if you're a man or a woman. Because <laughs> it cuts it off at the wrong <laughs> point and you go. Oh, it's like a 70s, it's like, I feel like I, I never went to a American camp, but if I was, I would have made a pass at Jack, <laughs> as a younger man. <laughs> Obviously not in character as an, an older, even though Jack would be, you know, legal to... You just can't tell, you get the sense that Jack's got breasts. Yeah, yeah you're right, there was a moment when, when the, yeah, the camera pans. Breasts. Jack's got breasts. No, it is, it's, it, it, but in, in fairness to it, this is, I think the whole film has little surreal moments. It ties together, it's got a lovely sort of vein running through it of just two brothers dealing with loss, meeting new people out in the world, and, and meeting a family that doesn't sort of generalise in any way. You know what I mean? It's a kind of... I was trying to explain it to a mate going... It's 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 almost without comparison to uh, like another East disease. I'm not because they, you know what I mean. I haven't seen them. Everyone's been talking to me about East disease, but people have been telling me that I'm apparently too young to remember that. No, you, would, you would be, but 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 what, it, it, it's it's a thing of a family that's very misunderstood and misrepresented in the media. And you're going families are families, no matter where they're from. Without being condescended, it's just that thing of going, everyone has an idiot brother, everybody has this, everybody has a patriarch, a matriarch, you know what I mean? It, it, it's all, it ties in lovely. But on their journey to that, 
first time you come to London, you just meet these strange people and you're going, what is your intent? And I think that was my character, who does actually have a heart of gold. You know what I mean? He doesn't mean any harm. He's been hurt too many times any, in the past. Any man who will sit down to, um, for want of a better word, drop some wolf bait without closing the door first, yep, questions must be asked. It really has the makings of a cult film, I think. You know, it's got that... How are you coming off from that? No! <laughs> it really has the makings. Johnny, Johnny Vegas having this shit. It really has the makings of a cult film. <laughs> I'm, I'm... So did Chucky, and people died. <laughs> what has the makings of a cult film? I don't know, Patty. My head didn't turn round. I didn't tell them that the grandmothers were going to do anything in hell. Um, I didn't chop to a door with an axe. It really has the makings of a cult film. <laughs> I wasn't sewn onto Jack Carroll's ass. It wasn't like we were a centipede, a millipede, or maybe just two insects that David Attenborough were chatting over. <laughs> Look at them now and they're breeding. You're going, no, Jack fell on me and he's hammered on, on absinthe. <laughs> Has to make it, it a has cold to film. make it a wonderful documentary, or, or perhaps you know a film that will, will will go on and live on in the lives of men. Well, I would hope so. It, okay. I, I I mean I was going to say something well, very sentimental about the film now, but I feel like I feel like well no I, feel like, well, I, no, I, I, I can't. I, I, I'll just stand there and go. <laughs> I was just going to say that it sort of. Well, as you said it already, it tears down barriers and doesn't draw attention to anything and sort of preach it, doesn't preach, and therefore it's very unified kind of film. But done through you sitting on a toilet seat on a... <laughs> I don't, no, I don't think it's unified. I think it's, it, it's this thing of going, if somebody new comes into any family unit, and it doesn't matter what background you're from, it shines a light on your family dynamic. And then you suddenly realise that he's the messer, he's this, he's that, he's... You know what I mean? It, it, it's a very simple story that's been told over and over again. Whereas, I think, um, I don't know, something like... You know the one where he's got the penguins living in his apartment? Yeah, it had such a lack of effect on me that I couldn't remember the title. Mr Popper's Penguins could be a real... Future classic. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know where to go. <laughs> but all right, what's your favourite buddy film? Buddy film. And if you say white chicks, I'll walk out of this <gasps> interview right now. I I feel extremely ignorant right now, Johnny. I feel like I'm not do, ignorant. Okay, I do. Well, I feel. What's your favourite film at the moment? At the moment. I feel like I'm bullying you. I, no, 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 no. I feel, I feel like you're, you're highlighting my need I, to sort up a little bit here. <laughs> no, no, no. All right. What was the first film that you, you kind of went, I get this. I like it. Oh, as in like it resonated with me. Yeah. Oh, there's lots yeah. of them. Does it have to be something I know serious? No, God no. Okay, okay. God, these films. Okay. That, that <laughs> is a thing. It, 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 there's comedies and stuff that that I go. Uh, do you know what I mean? That mean as much to me as the most sincere films. Don't do. We shouldn't do this in an interview where, where you go. Oh God, it would have to be. And you go, it doesn't have to be. Okay, okay, okay. Um, what film would you watch again? I have films that I like. About Time is one of them, actually. It's like, you know... Is that the guy that goes back in time? And yeah, he can, he I don't can. know. There's something really sweet and, like, lovely and... and but it was unexpected as well. You think it's going to be a rom-com. It's not really about the romance in the end. It's about something deep and... It's just nice and cuddly and cosy film. Pretty Woman did it for me. That's, that's a good one too. Every time. And the opening music, you know, the um, I don't need to fall at your yeah. knees just because you're coming to... I used to rewind and watch the, just the opening music and then watch the film. And then I met someone and um, my future father-in-law reminded me that it was about um, a woman prostituting her body for money and a man who had more money than anybody <laughs> else and they could therefore win a heart. And you're going... Thanks for spoiling that. Yeah, but but it's but it's but it's kind of romantic though. Still, he rescues her. He rescues her. He just burst in and hit him, and said, "Get off there." No, pretty woman. Did it. I, I am. 
I love my uh, Jeremy. I love my Ken Loach, my Mike Lee films. What about Lady and the Tramp? Lately, Lady and the Tramp um, animation my Dumbo. Oh, I don't know if I Dumbo. got into Dumbo. I was more of a Lady and the Tramp girl as a kid. No, you see, because I was always often romantically rejected, so I clung on to my mother's trunk for too long. And that was just a tear answer. <laughs> the bit where she's cradling him, and she's been labelled as something else, and he, he just doesn't feel like he fits in with the world. It's a beautiful thing for kids. Disney films can be quite cruel at times, can't they? <laughs> Bambi's one of them. Yeah, but not as cool as the original. You know the original uh, Little Mermaid? She dies. Does she? Have I only watched the 1980s version? But that's no, not... No, there isn't a Disney version out there where she oh, dies. Right. Yeah, Dumbo flies in and slashes her. <laughs> <laughs> he shivs her. <laughs> There's only room for one, baby. <laughs> um, no, not in the original story. As my wife explained, uh, it, 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 what the original text it's taken from, she gives up a voice and then dies at the end. But but it was, I'm not having a go at Disney. I'm not. It, it, it's. I think it's okay to introduce children to this life isn't all about happy endings and there is darkness. You know what I mean? And light comes of it. I just wish that the new Star Wars films had realised that. Rather Controversial. Than, rather than depriving me of a, <laughs> a childhood I'd already invested in. Well. Although, Rogue One, I'm forever in your debt. The best out of the original. It's the only one that belongs in the original three. Rogue One, thank you. Thank you. Me and my lad just looked at each other, left the cinema in silence, went home, possibly slept the best we'd ever slept, made him hot chocolate, stirred it, we said nothing. We just knew it was right. Yes. That was a good one. Well, thank you, Johnny. It was lovely chatting. It was really lovely chatting. I could chat to you all night, but I, I fear you might want to join the rest of them and have a have a pint and celebrate the no? night. I'll be honest, as a cast, we'd all get home. Really? Was that all of was that all the show at the end? The Q and A was it? It's a bit of a front. Um, Jack, you can't run the scene with him without him corpsing. It's a, he, he, he just he, he, he's kind of like I don't know. There were so many actors for hire. I came in thinking it was going to be such an organic process, and then Phil came in to play the ice cream man, and didn't know how to work an ice cream van. And you're going, do your research. That's tragic, really. I mean, couldn't, couldn't make a ninety-nine. What, what is there to it, really? I mean, we wasted four hours waiting for Phil to learn how to make an ice cream, and then suddenly he's hosting the Q and A. I could have done that, and I'd have been much more talking to the actors about how did you find your centre and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what, reading an actor prepares or. Phil is just basically checking the food out of my children's mouth. <laughs> well, on that bombshell, thank you very much. We've tried and to wrap this up four times. No, no, I, I don't want to wrap this up. I'm conscious of, of, of your time and... and, and Phil Alice is a bad man. I'll wrap it up. There you heard it. <laughs> thank you very much. And we'll see you next time on the fan carpet. <laughs> Pay for something. That is a massive fucking exaggeration on the word something. I mean, I know it's a shit hole, but are you taking the piss? Thank you for watching the fan carpet. If you like this video, be sure to click that thumbs up button at the bottom of your screen. And also be sure to subscribe to the fan carpet YouTube channels. They're absolutely free. That's so much fun, too. Be sure to check out the official website, thefancarpet.com. Also, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay up to date with reviews, competitions, the latest news, and so much more.